Now I am going to dictate a legal passage based on latest Supreme Court judgment at the rate of 160 words per minute. Let's start. These foundational facts typically involved or correspond to proving those facts or elements that cogently establish the actors use required for the offense alleged by the prosecution. It is only after such foundational facts have been proved beyond a reasonable doubt that the prosecution may take recourse of the statutory presumption provided by the legislature. The rationale behind the same is twofold. First, in the absence of any actors reuse, there is no possible way to ascertain. The corresponding means that is required to be established this is because it is the actors reuse which demarcates or delineates the means which is to be looked for and established. Without an actors reuse of any form, there arises no question of establishing and consequently the means in view of the fundamental principle of criminal jurisprudence that no no one should be punished for their thoughts or intention alone unless accompanied by some form of act. Secondly and more importantly, it ensures that the statutory presumption does not overreach or take the place of proof of guilt under the guise of presumption of culpable mental state peril. It would be too much to shift the entire onus onto the accused and to them ask him to prove a negative fact. Thus, any statutory presumption would operate only after the prosecution first lays the foundational facts necessary for the offenses that have been alleged beyond a reasonable doubt. This is because a negative cannot be proved in the initial threshold in order to prove a contrary fact. The fact whose opposite is sought to be established must be proposed first. Thus, in law, it is tried that the initial burden always lies on the prosecution. This way, the establishment of foundational facts by the prosecution is a prerequisite for triggering the statutory presumption for shifting the onus on the accused to prove the contrary. It is a delicate balance struck between the practical need for such a presumption in law and the cardinal principles of criminal jurisprudence to ensure that the presumption does not cross or transgress the fine line that demarcates the presumption of culpable mental state from the presumption of guilty itself. Since a negative cannot be proved an accused cannot be asked to disprove his guilt even before the foundational allegations with supporting material thereof are placed and duly established by the prosecution before the court para. Unless the prosecution is able to prove foundational facts in the context of the allegations made against the accused under any specific provisions of the POCSO, and the case may be the statutory presumption of culpable mental state under section 30 of the the POCSO will not come into the picture pair even if the prosecution establishes such foundational facts and the presumption is raised against the accused he can revert the same either by discrediting prosecution's case as improbable or absurd or the accused could lead evidence to prove his defense in order to rebut the presumption however the said presumption under section 30 of the POCSO will be said to have been rebutted only where the accused by way of his defense establishes effect contrary to the presumption and proves the same beyond a reasonable doubt para. Foundational facts required under section 15 of the POCSO stop para. Now coming to section 15 of the POCSO as discussed earlier the foundational facts ordinarily pertain to the actors reuse required under a particular offense however given the fact that section 15 penalizes three distinct and varying degrees of intention and having regard to the mutually exclusive nature of each of the three offenses provided they are under the mere storage or position of a child pornographic material cannot become the foundational facts or basis for attracting all three of the said offenses all the same pair as discussed by us in the foregoing parts of this judgment while on a plain reading section 15 subsection within bracket s within bracket 1 within bracket 2 and within bracket 3 it might appear that all require the same actors reuse that is the storage or position of the child pornographic material however such an interpretation is applied as a closer example of each of the subsection would reveal that there exists a very fine but pertinent distinction in the actor's reuse which is required to constitute an offense 
Sa 100 section 15 subsection within bracket so within bracket 1 within bracket 2 or within bracket 3 of the POCA so para that support the purpose of section 15 subsection within bracket 1 the necessary foundational facts which the prosecution would first have to establish before it can be allowed to validity raise the statutory presumption of a culpable mental state would simply sitter be the storage or position of any child pornographic material and that the person accused had failed to delete destroy or report the same stop thank you